Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you the best type of watercolor papers to use for botanical painting. So I'm going to show you the main paper I use for botanical painting, one that's a little bit um, heavier for larger paintings, and then also a really inexpensive paper that works pretty well still and is really great for looser watercolors or just experimenting and not worrying about wasting expensive paper. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's get right into it. So the most common watercolor paper I use right now is this Arsha's Cold Pressed 140 pound paper. And this is what I use for all of my 50 watercolor flowers uh, portraits project. It's really nice 100% cotton paper. Um, so 140 pound is sort of mid-weight. There's also 90 pound and 300 pound. And cold press means it's a little bit of a texture on the paper. You can't really see it on film. Whereas hot press is very smooth. And there's also one with more texture, which is called rough. Um, this is fairly common. A lot of botanical artists use hot press paper, and I used to. But I really like how this cold press paper creates um, texture and light and dark for me um, on its own on my first step of wet and wet washes. So it creates a really luminous effect, which you don't always get with hot press paper. So that's why I started using this one. And I find that the pad of paper can differ from the large sheets you buy, which I think are about 30 by 24 inches. Um, which you cut down on your own. This is a piece of a larger sheet and um, you can see it's quite a bit thicker. It's almost, it's not a board, but it's very thick. This is the 300 pound Arches watercolor paper and this is hot press, so it's smoother. Um, but again, this this piece coming from the larger sheet is a little bit different still than the hot press paper you would get in the block or pad. So for my botanicals I use this and for a lot of my animal paintings I use the 300 pound hot press paper. And why I use a 300 pound for my animals is because it's a lot of the time they're larger paintings and I'm also covering a lot of more surface area with water and this will not warp as much and it will withhold much wetter washes. So that's just what I've found works for me and then I cut this larger sheet down. This is obviously just a scrap little small piece but I thought I would show you that. Um, and I will link below um, where you can get these online. Um, this is definitely my go-to so if you want to start botanical painting um, it's not the most expensive paper, but it's also not the least expensive. Um, but I would highly recommend using high quality paper. So now that you have the two main watercolor papers that I use, that's cold press and hot press, I will show you the other two that I use. This one is not watercolor paper, but it is quite important. Um, it's tracing paper. And I use this for every painting. Some people might use graphite transfer paper, but I feel like the lines you get after you transfer, well, it's not usually this hard to rip out. Goodness, just a moment. First sheet of the pad, anyway. This is just tracing paper and I draw my drawing on the tracing paper and then I scribble pencil on the back, lay it over my watercolor paper, draw over top of the design one more time and then it transfers a light drawing onto my watercolor paper. This means that I don't damage the surface of my watercolor paper and I can easily, with my kneaded eraser, lift off the graphite as I paint, so there's no pencil line stuck under my painting, which really is what differentiates something that looks more professional to amateur. And I'll do another video that shows you exactly the process of how I do that. I am just doing some quick tip videos for the next few weeks as I've licensed a few courses and I'm working on a few full-length classes, so I have a lot of behind the scenes things going on right now. 
Um, so that's the tracing paper. I just get this at Staples. You can get it online too, but it's about $5 for this and I use it all the time. The next um, is this Dollar Rowney 90-pound um, watercolor paper. So this paper is very inexpensive. You can get it from Walmart um, and it's not as heavy. It's 90 pound. But for the price point and the weight of the paper, I find it to be really quite a good paper. It's made in England. Um, I'm not sure if it's 100% cotton. It is acid free. But I use this a lot for my sort of looser watercolor paintings um, that I sometimes do. And also for experimenting because the Arches paper this one is a little bit more expensive so sometimes I have a really hard time just sort of letting loose and trying things I've never tried before on this paper. So that's what I use this for and you won't get exactly the same effect but it is pretty decent. And then I've also started to make these little handmade nature sketchbook um, booklets with this paper and I just cut the sheet in half and I stack them up and then I just staple it and put some tape over top to make these quick little nature sketchbooks. Um, it's really awesome to do with kids too and great paper to paint along with your kids as well. So I am creating this little sketchbook and you can see it's um, pretty good for ink and wash as well as sort of these looser um, floral styles, but I still managed to get some fairly decent detail with this elk that I did. Um, and this is a little project from one of my new Skillshare classes coming up, so stay tuned for when this launches. Um, and this was a spread I did with BC Parks um, a day that I went to Strathcona Park and took a few things as inspiration and made this little sketchbook um, study. So anyway, if you are just starting out, you don't want to spend a ton of money on supplies. This is really great paper to get. You can get it um, on Amazon or probably, you know, most uh, art stores may sell it. Walmart, I know in Canada, definitely sells this. And again, it's under $10 for this whole pad. Um, so a great way to start out with that. So that's pretty much it. These are the main four types of papers that I use and um, I would recommend these over um, some other brands that I haven't mentioned here that I've tried that I had really frustrating results with. So if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and thank you again for watching and I'll see you next week with another video.